Kildare level again through Porrick O'Neill before three unanswered points, but Clare five points to do ahead. A Rory Donnelly point from play, David Tuberty free, and this effort from cornerback Martin McMahon helped Clare into a 5-2 lead by the half hour. Kildare were strangely subdued in the first half, but they cut the gap back to two late in the opening 35, and Keith Cribbon put this point over as Kildare looked to build momentum. But it was Clare who got the last point at the half as midfielder Shane McGrath got his second point of the evening, and at half time it was the underdogs who led by seven points to four. In front of a crowd of almost seven and a half thousand at Cusick Park, Kildare were out of the traps quickly in the second half, and this point from Alan Smith, his third, put the gap back to two. Clare were in no mood to capitulate and could well have got a goal moments later as Shane McGrath got through only for Mark Donlan to pull off a fine save in the Kildare goal. However, from the result in 45, David Tuberty put over a terrific score, wind assisted to put the gap back out to three. Tuberty certainly had his shooting boots on for Clare and in the 45th minute he put over this close in free which added to an earlier Tuberty free and a Gary Brennan point meant Clare now led by double scores 12 points to six. But then the great Kildare comeback as they turned a deficit into a lead. Six unanswered points, which included two from Ono Flaherty and scores from Alan Smith, Eamon Callaghan, substitute Paddy Brophy and another Callaghan point and the sides were level by the 61st minute. Moments later, the Kildare supporters rose to acclaim the lead score as their seventh unanswered point scored by impact sub Ono Flaherty with Kildare ahead for the first time in the match with seven minutes to go. Tries the might, Clare couldn't respond, and it was Kildare who held on to advance to the next round of the qualifiers as it finished in a one-point win for Jason Ryan's side. Kildare 13 points, Clare 12. The players show great belief and confidence in themselves. As the game went on, we actually started using the ball better rather than maybe panicking at any stage. Uh, the first half was disappointing. Um, a lot of things didn't go according to plan, but we retained possession far better and were very patient in how we used the ball. And we stopped giving away the ball as much. It prevented uh, Clare from being able to make as many uh, counter-attacks against us and maybe do as much damage. I thought we probably could have taken it to extra time, and, uh, but it wasn't to be. And uh, like all one-point games, you know, it has... You can point to a hundred different reasons we lost it, but at the end of the day, I'm extremely proud of the players. They've been a um, pleasure to deal with all year long. They've put in a fantastic effort, and uh, you know, you couldn't, oh, the guy couldn't have asked for more. You know? No, you couldn't, and it would have been the fairy tale story of the round had Clare got through on. They went damn close to it. They definitely did. They put a bang in it. Um, they ran all day. The hard. Kildare, they were unlucky, um, a couple of chances. You've seen here, Joe Hayes, most managers wouldn't like this, but he played like a sweeper all day. He was comfortable on the ball. He gave give it to the runners and support. They were very patient as well. Um, there wouldn't be great tackling now on Kildare no, no. at that particular point as well. But it's this nice, slow build-up. Yeah. No panicking. Absolutely. Uh, he's working it well out. Yeah, definitely, definitely was it. He come in here and then Doesn't he just take confidence. He, over yeah, to keep he just the ball he, like he just waited for the right ball, the right the right runner, and Rory Donnelly, sharp turn. And it's always always good at the forwards. Got a score in his mind, first mission, and he shows great strength here. Shrugs him off, difficult angle, and puts it over the bar. Mm. That is a great score. This is a great score. Uh, Guy Brennan, the captain, um, kicked four last week. A solid on the inside, goes direct, turns one way, turns the other, and takes a real mature finish here. Most people would blast the net, and he fists it over the bar. Now, this is the last 10 minutes, and they did make a lot of chances, didn't they? Well, th th yeah, this is a brilliant chance here. Um, a great goal opportunity. Uh, Rory Donnelly runs forward, gives a great pass in to Shane McGrath, and then a brilliant save by Mark Donnelly. But if that had went in, it would have been a game set yeah, in match. Yeah. I think possibly Kildare might have underestimated Clare coming down. You know, yeah. a lot of people would think that the weaker counties, so called weaker counties, the Prairies and Clares of Munster aren't that strong. I think Clare have had a tremendous year. They had two yeah. draws, or they had a draw against Waterford. Um, they played Kerry. They went into that Kerry, Kerry game thinking they could win. They have a couple of players. I've said it before, I've played with the likes of Gary Brennan and David Tuberty, as good as you'll get in the country. Mm -hmm. Gary Brennan has had a tremendous season, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's, it's a pity, I suppose, that, it, that players like him, that his season is over so early and all that. But I mean, Clare have, have a lot to be proud of. They're really, the West of Clare especially, are a really strong sure. football and I suppose with the hurlers and you're going to be playing second fiddle to them but they've had a tremendous year they won't be happy with me saying that no but and it won't be any help to them but um, 
They've had a great, great year. They, and they are promoted, think, aren't they? They're in Division 3 next year, so they'll be playing at a higher level. Yeah, and I think the right man is in charge. He seems to get a lot out of them, and he seems to have them all gelling together. And uh, I think they, they, you know, they, have, they have a good year to look forward to next year. I think mm -hmm. Kildare will be, be lucky to come out of there, and they're happy that they're, they're still mm -hmm. in the championship. What about the Kildare performance, yeah. Jarrett? Um, uh, very lucky. Very lucky. Um, as I said, they mixed uh, the bad, the very bad, with the OK. Um, in the first half, it counted over 10 turnovers, uh, needless turnovers. Mm. Um, you know, here's a, a goal opportunity, but composure is needed there. And Tommy Mulock, unfortunately, uh, drove it wide. This is Gary White, you know, again, a composure, a ball into the forwards, kicked out over the sideline. But in the second half, they certainly picked it up. Um, you know, here's Sean Hurley going forward. Mm. Again, showed a bit of composure, uh, gave a ball across. Uh, poor, gives it to Eamon and Eamon, this is the actual, this is the point to draw the match up. So at this stage, Kildare had kicked six points on the trot. And then, uh, you know, this particular point here, if we look at uh, Ono Flaherty, who came on as a second half sub, picks up the ball at, uh, at uh, halfway, sends a lovely little ball in towards Tom O'Connor, uh, but carries on his run and takes that pass from Colin McNally, sticks inside and kicks it over. Good the score. It was a great yeah, score yeah, yeah. and it was the score that actually won the game for Kildare. But again, a, a huge improvement is needed. Um, Kildare over this, this championship have been starting slow but finishing strongly. But, you know, sometimes, like happened against Mead, they you can let themselves... Get away with it. Yeah. Exactly, get away with it. And uh, again, they have a lot of things to work on but they're still in there. They're still a qualifier team. Uh, I think that when Kildare are the favourites tag, it, it doesn't suit them. I think they perform better when they go in as the underdog. And, and they, they will, will have be the next day. Monaghan the next yeah. day. They will have that underdog's um, um, tag. tag and they'll be going up to Crow Park with nothing to fear and nothing to lose. All right then. Well, now we're going to head to Hyde Park for the clash of Russ Common and Armagh. Your commentator here is Ger Canning. Roscommon will be hoping to build upon their well-merited win over Cowan last Saturday. Concerns about the fitness of half-backs David Keenan and Niall Daly have eased, and they both start in a side showing Ian Kilbride in for David O'Gara. Armagh's win over Tyrone in Oma was even more meritorious. Jamie Clark was a goal scorer here the last time the sides met in Dr Hyde Park, while free-taker Tony Kernan has scored 11 points in his last two matches. Ender Smith, now Kevin Higgins, Keenan feeding it forward here, as far as Ian Kilbride, and that was uh, lost there by Connor Daly, late change for Ronan Stack, James Morgan, once again it's Forker who really is playing a very, very deep role, obviously going to help out in the middle third, Kevin Dias uses the ball intelligently usually, and Finden now carrying it forward. And that is a nice score. Stefan Campbell was coming in. And his first of the day. And Armagh take the lead for the first time. Once again carried forward by the wing-back Shields. In as far as Aidan Forker. Started the game very deep. Shields again. Back to Kevin Dias. Finally it's Tony Kernan hitting it. And Tony Kernan the end of a... A movement that involved four players, his second point of the match, and Ross Common trail once again as Armagh go ahead three points to two. McKeever once again. Big, huge one down. Carricker looking to dish it off, going for it himself, got him an impossible angle, and he's put it over the bar. Great point by Kyle Carricker. Well, he's 26 years of age from Cross McGlen. Been a great club player, now getting a lot of opportunities at this level, and he is responding magnificently. Shawnee McDermott. Now here's Connor Daly. McDermott again. Onto it comes Niall Daly. Daly trying to weave his way forward here, helped out by Ender Smith, but there's nothing lightly given to Roscommon. And again, into a cul-de-sac they go. Back out as far as David Keenan. And Armagh just say to them, OK, you can have it out around 45 metres, but you're not going to get it easy anyway inside. Cahill Shine, forced to shoot. And that is the end result. And that's brilliant defensive work. 
a human roadblock presented to Kalshine. Neat ball inside to Clark. He's getting out ahead of Niall Carty. And kicking off his left and kicking brilliantly as he's done so often in a magnificent career. Jamie Clark. Once again, offering a dynamic presence in front of goal for Armagh. Well, it's 90% Roscommon support here, as you would expect, playing at home. Trying to get behind their team now for a big second half. A skull shine fires it down into the inside forward line. As far as David Berta, taken on by Kevin Higgins. Chance of a score here right at the very beginning, and that's a good start to the second 35 minute. Comes in off the post. First for Kevin Higgins, and now just three between them. It's their first point, of course, from play. Jersey pull there by Finden, referee allows an advantage. It's in here with David O'Gara. Cross to David Keenan. Playing it back in again. Ender Smith's shot goes over. So two out of four attacks rewarded by Roscommon. Start of the second half. Now they've got two points from play, and there's three between them again. Good ball inside here. Uh, Dante by Finden, laid off to Dias. Beautiful play to Clark. That lovely style, that irresistible final touch by Jamie Clark. Score of three points, two from open play, but it's all about the quality of the pass forward, and then that exquisite finish by Jamie Clark. Taken up by Aaron Kernan. Again, holding, frustrating Ross Carlin. Never wasting a ball if they can't help it at all. Jamie Clark. Clark with three points so far, up to the 20-meter line. Able to play it off to Kyle Carragher. And Carragher hitting it and putting it over the bar for his second point in each half. And it was made for him by Jamie Clark once again. Carragher was free. And that freedom enabled him to push this into a 12 point to 8 advantage to Armagh. So the end of the inter-county road for one of these teams. And Roscommon have all the work to do. From O'Gara as far as Kevin Higgins. And he didn't really take it under control, but helped here by Senan Kilbride. Trying to burst through for Cahill Shine, and Cahill Shine kicks it and kicks it over the bar. Good point by Cahill Shine, he's not going to give up on this. Cahill Shine, big, strong, strapping fellow in midfield. Good score. Dias. Carraher. Kicking it forward. Good play here for Jamie Clark. On to his left, gracefully striking this one over. He's got a fourth. And the orange flags there in the stand. Celebrating another score, because now there are four between them once again, thanks to Jamie Clark. Back here to Connor Daly. Daly still showing tricks, but then a good block by Aaron Kernan. Comes back again here. Higgins. Oh, what a good effort, and it's stopped there by Philip McAvoy. Resourcefully back out. Great shot by Kevin Higgins. And that was the kind of goal that the Roscommon fans will feel their team possibly needs here. Sustained pressure. Back with David Keenan again it comes. Keenan having to go around a number of defenders. Back in from Smith, back in as far as David Murta, and David Murta kicks one from play, his fifth of the day, and they eat into the lead. Good play by David Murta under pressure. Scrambled possession in the middle of the park. Everybody working frantically at this stage in wretched conditions. Murta, that's David Murta, laying it off here. And that one strikes the post, and it's over by Senan Kilbride. Got a touch to it, it's his first point. Well, that could have gone anywhere and might have produced something. Close run thing. Aaron Kernan kicks it in. Here's a chance, and it's ended up in the back of the net. of the net by Stefan Forker who's only just come on this booming one into the square here and he was in on top of the goalkeeper as he's entitled to do Aaron Kernan set it up for him and Stefan Forker got the fist to it and that should pretty much decide this tie and it's running away completely now from Roscommon
Late chance, maybe, and the goalkeeper dives, and it's duly put in the back of the net. Kieran Murta. Just watch as David Murta initially ran in, and then it was his brother, Kieran Murta, who got the Ross Goblin goal after 68 minutes. They've got to try and go for another goal. They need something. What can Donny Smith produce? He's having a go. It's tipped over by the goalkeeper. It's a point which Donny Smith will see registered against his name. Goalkeeper uh, Philip McAvoy not taking any chances and just touching it over. And there is the final whistle, and it's victory for Armagh. Two away victories on the trot now for Paul Grimley. Final score here. It's Armagh, one goal and 17 points. Ross Common, one goal and 12. I think if we had got the run, some days they, they, you don't get the, the rub of the green. And, uh, you know, today was not our day. But full credit for Armagh for making it not our day. And uh, they're a different team. They're full of energy. They're full of, of hard work. They're full of uh, good scoring. And they put up a big score in, in difficult conditions today. Certainly did a good win for Armagh. Dermot, what was the main difference between Armagh and Roscommon yesterday? Well, I think both teams played defensively. But the real difference for Armagh was their ability to transition from defence to attack. And uh, there's a couple of ways that you can look at it. There we can see Andy Mallon coming out at pace, um, leaving his defence, bypasses a number of Roscommon players. Now this is this particular one is a slow build-up, but there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of good passing in, and there's Andy again gets the ball, played in towards Kyle Carraher, and if we pause it there, look how many players. There's 12 players back there for 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 uh, for Roscommon, but a, a brilliant brilliant pass in here from Tony Kernan, finds Andy Mallon who continued his run and he kicks it over the bar. And that's something that I, comes directly from McGinney. Uh, this is again, uh, Kieran McKeever had, had a great game uh, playing the sweeper role, a high ball in over the top. Um, and if we look at this one here, this, 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 we start the clock there uh, in the cornerback, Aaron Kernan gets the ball. This is the second kick pass of the move. Two passes later, uh, hand passes, there's a ball kicked again forward um, into Carrier here, turns around another kick pass into Jamie Clark who kicks his second point of the game from play. That was four kick passes yeah. from one end of the field to the other in 22 seconds. And throughout the game, Armagh could do that better than Roscommon. They were a lot more accurate with their passing, they were a lot more controlled with their handling. And in the end, that's what worked for them. Yeah. Tomás, what was the biggest problem